Okay guys, this is an update to another video I made that's very similar to this about Visual Studio Code writing your first console application. I'm going to show you how to do that, get it started because it's changed a little bit. I get a lot of emails and comments that say, hey, this isn't working. It's because it's an old version when I used it, so this is an update. I'm also going to show you how to figure out things on your own so when things don't work quite right, you can go look for them. I'm also going to compare it a little bit to Visual Studio, Microsoft's Visual Studio, which is what I use every day at work in my professional uh, programming profession. So just so you know, I don't know Visual Studio code that much, but I'm going to show you how to go out and look on your own to figure things out a little bit. Okay, so let's fire up Visual Studio code. First of all, if you don't know, Visual Studio code was meant to be not Microsoft based so you could share it on different platforms you could use it on Linux which is free you could use it on Mac whatever Apple everything so it's meant to be open source so you don't have to pay for it it's, everything's becoming more and more open you don't have to have Windows to run it but I happen to have Windows and I'm running it but you don't have to that's what the value is so let's run Visual Studio Code um, I'm not going to show you how to install it because that is another video um, I'm going to assume you have Visual Studio Code installed all right, now let's take a look. First of all, when you first see this, you've got these tabs here, just notice, and it's it's a little weird looking. It's a little intimidating the first time you see it, but it's really not that bad. First of all, get rid of this welcome stuff. And just have, let's have a clean, clean open space. All right, so what you have here are your main uh, file explorer. So when you have a project, which we have none right now, we have no project, um, all your files and everything will be right here and then your search criteria for if you have a file open you want to search and replace just like you would in Word Microsoft Word or something you would do that here this is source control which don't even worry about that right now source control is about how you control your code and in different versions and you work with other people but don't worry about that right now at all this is this is not nothing to worry about this is the debug area where you can step through your code and figure out what's wrong with it. It's very valuable, and I'll show you how to use it, but debugging is very critical to what we do as programmers. Okay, and this is the extension area where you can download extensions that help you out with your code because other people write things that kind of help you out. These are kind of like add-ons, you know, things that you might buy, like you buy your phone and you might add on something to it, okay? Just think of it that way. Um, just for this, uh, I'm not exactly sure what we need for this, but go ahead and get the C Sharp for Visual Studio Code and C Sharp extensions. And notice when you see a little update here, it means that I'm behind a version. So I'm going to click update. It's going to go out and do it for me. And then this little thing should show me that it's been updated. It's installing something for these extensions. So some of the extensions are when you start to type, uh, it will pop up little helpers for you. Well, that may not be natively installed so these are the kind of things that you would have that would help you out all right now once you do that you need to reload the whole thing and it should be all up to date now you let's go ahead and look at my version just so you know where i'm at right now i'm at version 1.290 this is uh, november 2018 i'm making this video okay that may help you out a year or two from now when you're looking at this okay so right now we have nothing and i'm going to go ahead and close this let's start all clean okay now, uh, what we need to do is create a working folder. And what I did was, on my desktop, I created an empty folder, okay? All our files are gonna go here. It's nice and neat and clean, everything in one folder. Okay, this is very simple. Now, I forget how to, how do I, how do I start a new project? See, when you start a brand new C-sharp project, if you type something in, it will help you out. It will build some libraries and things for you, so you don't have to manually do everything. But when you forget how to do that, which I did, I went out here to Google. Google is your best friend. I typed in .NET New Console, and because when I typed in .NET New Console earlier, it wasn't working. So I typed in .NET New Console not working. And notice that somebody else has had this issue. And all they did was um, they went to command prompt and they typed in .NET new. So it's actually easier now. Okay, so first of all, you need a terminal window. A terminal window is a way for you to type in commands. And see, see down here below, um, we, we are on a, we are on my users at C folder, my hard drive, T-man. So 
first of all, before we do this, let's close the terminal. Now, let's open a folder so this project knows we are pointed to something. So I'm going to open that folder I just created. I'm going to go to my desktop, go to C Sharp, and hit Select Folder. Now, if you had any files in there, they would show up here. But we don't have any files. It's brand new. I wanted to start out clean for you. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go. Now notice that my terminal window, which you can close and open, is now on our desktop under my C Sharp folder. Okay. Now, if you hit the up arrow, here's the deal. After some uh, some frustration and some problems and trials and error, about 20 minutes, I finally found the solution and I got it working for you so you don't have to go through what I did. All right, once again, starting with an empty folder on my desktop. Now, we are going to go to Visual Studio Code, starting all over just for you. I found some pretty good instructions. There were some things I was not doing. So now, starting all over, we're going to go to Terminal, New Terminal. We're going to start a brand new project. Now look here, I'm under my folder. All's good. Now we're going to do what we said before is we're going to go to dot, dot .net new console. So we're telling it new console application. All right, just in case you can't see that, I'm going to put it in Notepad. There's the first one, .NET New cons Console. Now we're going to do a .NET re Restore. R-E-S-T-O-R-E. -E. So this is going to be building some dependencies for us. Now, just so you know, in Visual Studio, the reg regular one, this is a way easier. So if you're having trouble, it's okay. I had trouble too. I'm a professional programmer, and this is weird and kludgy. So don't worry about it. All right, now let's do a .NET run, R-U-N. All right, what it's going to do, it's going to run that Hello World app. And way down here in the bottom, you might be able to see it, it says Hello World. And that's because our program... We'll talk about the program in a minute, but our, our program is writing out to the console a write line called Hello World. That's all it does is it writes out one little word. Now from here, we can do millions of things, but right now we're, we successfully, successfully did it. But we have not started debugging it, and that's what threw me off. So now that we've done all of this, I believe that's all we have to do. Notice that there's a little spot right here. See that little spot? That's the debug line. So now we're going to go over here to the uh, the little bug smasher, and we're going to hit run. We're going to pick .NET Core. Hang on. All right, I'm going to I'm going to hit run. Now notice that it stops this highlighted line. It stops on Hello World. Now if you know your commands, you can hit F10. F10 and it will step to the code line by line and you can look at the variables and you can see exactly what it's doing. Okay, so if that's all you needed, that's great. That's where we are. Now let me show you how much easier that is in regular Visual Studio. We did all that crap in Visual Studio Code, which is one reason why I don't like it that much. Let's use the real Visual Studio and show you how much easier that same thing was to do. Regular Visual Studio, very powerful. Except you gotta wait for it and wait for it and wait for it and wait for it and wait for it. Okay, so Visual Studio does a lot more with like web stuff and web API and web services and it does it does a lot of different things. You can create Windows services. Alright, this is what I use in my job every day. So once again it's very similar, but it's Microsoft based. So that same thing, you go to File New Project. You would do a Windows console application. Okay, now it's going to do everything we just did manually for us. Right? Now, here's our program, and it didn't have that console dot, dot right line. Hello world. Don't forget your semicolon. 
Now, watch. I just put a. I didn't have to do all that dot net run dot net. I didn't have to do any of that stuff. So now I'm going to run it with a breakpoint. That is a breakpoint right there. And look, it stopped before it ran the line. It stopped before it ran the line. Hello world. And if I hit F10, it's going to step over the line. F10, and we lost our window, but there it is. Hello world. And that's how much easier it is to use Visual Studio. That's why when people complain about Visual Studio Code, it's, it is hard. It is hard to use. It's a lot harder. But anyway, let's go back to it because that's what this video is about. And let's try something. Okay, first of all, let's talk about what it's doing here in case you care. Um, because some people just wanted to get this working and we've got it working. So for those of you that care, let's keep on going. All right, namespaces are, I actually don't like namespaces because they're kind of useless. All they do is they encapsulate chunks of code. That's all it does. It gives a name, it gives a name to a chunk of code. In that, in, in that it's okay, but it's kind of useless. So anytime you see a namespace and you don't need it, you can get rid of it. You don't need namespaces. All it is is an organization tool. All right, it's just extra code. I can't stand extra code. Anytime I see code that I don't need, I get rid of it. There's times when you need it, when you're working on these huge complex applications and you want to divide things by names. Yeah, there's a place for it, but we don't need it, okay? Now, in Visual Studio, you can hit Control K, Control D, and it will align everything for you, but Okay, so ignore this little line right here. That's just telling you that this is not being referenced by anything, and this is not being referenced by anything. So what you have here is the most basic program, which is a class program, and it has one method, one function, and that is a main method, and all console app apps need a main method because that's what it gets, gets started. Now, if you have args here, arguments are for you to pass something to this program for it to take it and run. So suppose you have a program, but it doesn't know the name of the file or the folder. You could pass it an argument with the name of a folder, and it's going to know, oh, I'm going to use this folder to go read the files. You could pass it a variable of, oh, a tax amount. And it's going to say, oh, I have a tax amount. Now I know how to run this program with this tax amount. And it's an array because you see these brackets right here. So you can pass many different arguments to it, but you don't have to. So just for right now, just know that you're calling a main um, a main method with arguments, it's, it's um, not required though. So what could we do right here? Well, you can write different things to the screen. If you want to write it, you can make pictures. I'm not going to go too in depth with this. I'm copying and pasting right lines. Um, and you can go, you want to make it nice and neat. All right, so now if I ran this, we can debug it. See, you can put a break point on any one of these lines and it will hit it if when you hit debug. Watch this. It's gonna hit three different breakpoints. So it hit the first breakpoint and it's not done anything yet. If you hit F5, it goes to the next breakpoint. It did that line, that line, and then it stopped. So now down below we have this these little things I put in these bars. We have a hello world. We're gonna hit F5 again. It's gonna write out three more, or now two more, and now F5 again, and the whole program's done, and we have hello world written. Now, this is a very useless program, but it's a good way to get started. Now, what you m would do this for, maybe, is let's declare a variable, an integer of, we'll give it a name, my integer my int equal to five, okay? Int your int equal to 10, all right? Now, we want to know what are those two together? So we might write console.writeline, and you could do this, you could do this, you could put this in a third variable, total equal to my int plus your int. Right? Now we have three variables, my int, uint, total, 
and the total will be my int plus u int. And then we could write out, let's write out in the very first line. Oh, this weird black screen is strange. I'm not used to this black. Let's just write out total. Okay, now you have to think about this. When you're writing a line, it wants a string type. But we're writing out a total type. And some languages won't let you just write a string when it's an int. But some languages will know what you're talking about and will convert it for you. But we're not going to talk about data types right now. Just know that we're writing a, a line, which is an integer, out to a string. And we should see 15, 5 plus 10, and then a bunch of hello worlds in this mark. So let's just run it. All right, down here we see our 15, hello world, hello, blah, 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 blah. All right, and that's how it works. That's a very basic program. It's very basic things what we're going to do. There's thousands of things you could do with this. And one of them it might be like reading a file. If you have a file with 10,000 records in it, you could read it and loop through it really quickly and do some math on it and write it out really quickly. That's why programming is so valuable because the program itself is so much faster than you are. And if you can write a program to do something for you, you don't have to manually do it. And people that can't program can't do that, you see. Anyway, I hope that helped you get started. Um, be sure to install, when you install Visual Studio, Studio Code, make sure you install .NET Core SDK just in case you don't uh, I want to make sure you did that also alright if, if you like this let me know and I'll make more a lot more of this a lot more complex because um, we can go very deep into this this is so 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 basic um, but maybe I can help you I hope I helped you